fresh water tank sanitization. You've asked for it, here it is. Boom. So like the rest of our maintenance series, we have roped in our good friend, Todd Hansen from Two Beards and a Babe. Two Beards and a Babe. He's also a master certified technician with the RVIA and is a trainer for the RV Training Academy. Yeah, RV Training Academy, which is in Texas. Mm -hmm. If you wanna learn a lot about this kind of stuff or you wanna become a certified inspector or technician, look them up. We'll have a link down below. Really good stuff. Right, so he knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. So it's always good for us to get an expert lined up in case we have any questions. Absolutely. From a high level, this process is really not complicated at all. All you're doing is you're gonna get some bleach water and you're gonna put it into your tanks and into your lines and let it sit there. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna flush it. It's not that complicated. I think where the complications arise is in the different types of RVs, which is another reason we wanted Todd on hand to kind of talk about other systems versus our systems. That, and it also complicates things that you need to let it sit for eight to 12 hours. So right. you gotta find the right timing to do something like this. Mm -hmm. And you might see another method online, which is to basically do this on a travel day where you fill the system with bleach, mm -hmm. let it slosh around and, and just be in there during your travel. And that's a perfectly valid method. Uh, we just didn't want to complicate our travel days any more than they already are. Yeah, and, and try we, to film it on top of all that yeah. and travel is just a little bit too much. So we're doing it as we're stationary here in an RV park. A few things you're gonna need. Obviously you're gonna need some bleach. Yeah. And the dilution ratio, according to Todd, is about a cup per 50 gallons of water. So when we're talking about bleach, we're talking about diluting it. What we're looking at is about one cup to every 50 gallons. So. You need to figure out how big your freshwater tank is, and then you need to do the math from there, but roughly one cup to every 50 gallons. There's different numbers out there that you're gonna see, but we're yeah. gonna take it from Todd. Yeah, you know, I did a little research on this, and I, I came across everything from one cup per 10 gallons, yeah. which is super strong, to one cup per 60 gallons, or a quarter cup per 15 gallons. So we're kind of like on the, the more diluted edge of that. Uh, but yeah, we're going to take our master certified technician's advice and use one cup per 50 gallons. So obviously you're going to need some bleach. Yes. You're going to need a bucket. Probably a good idea to have like a five gallon bucket so you're not constantly filling up a one gallon bucket. I think that would get old. <laughs> you're going to need a siphon hose. Oops, sorry. Not bleach in there, is <laughs> no, it? No bleach yet. Uh, you're going to need a siphon hose. Basically, usually your fill system is going to have a standard female on it so you connect the male in i just we had an old potable water hose that we had as a backup for a long time so i just cut off one end of it to go in the bucket and uh you know you can buy these at home depot or whatever also i think it's important to have several jugs of water if you're going to be stationary like we are today we're not going to be able to have our water running for mm -hmm. washing our hands or drinking or dishes or laundry. Cooking or, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, we're not gonna do we're laundry, gonna do laundry. Today, <laughs> yeah. but we do have a filter water pitcher that I have for some drinking water, but it's always good to have some backups just in case. Yeah, you're not gonna have use of any of your, your water systems, but you can use your toilets. Mm -hmm. Simple as that, let's just get to it. You might notice this is a little darker outside. <laughs> we had to take a little bit of a break. The rain came and we just decided to step away from filming for a little bit. So we went to a couple breweries. A couple of them. Yep. <laughs> Besides that, I wasn't real thrilled about not having access to running water all day long. So why not let it soak and sit overnight while we're sleeping? Yeah. Cause then, you know, what, 12 hours from now will be what time is it? Oh my gosh, Six. Yeah, 6 15 in the morning. So 8 a.m. Yeah, we'll have plenty of time. We'll just be able to let it go overnight and mm -hmm. yeah, okay. we'll, we'll finish part phase two in the morning. All right, I'm gonna step aside. Step aside. We're gonna be showing you this process on our system, which has the Nautilus P1 system, which is this thing here that we've shown before with all the cool colored dials and valves in here. But one of the things that you're gonna to wanna to do is bypass your water heater. You don't want any bleach going into your water heater because there's lots of components in there. There's metal uh, bleach accelerates the oxidation process and rusting, and it's just not good to have bleach in there. So here's Todd on bypassing the hot water heater. 
let's say you don't have a Nautilus system, you need to get to your water heater so you can bypass it. And of course, this being an RV, they're always in the tough, tight places. So what we want to do is before we sanitize, before we get this uh, bleach mixture in there, we need to make sure that we bypass our water heater. And the reason being is a water heater is made of metal and bleach is made of a hyper salt. And of course, the two actually create rust. So we want to bypass our water heater. Now, our water heaters, if we don't have a bypass system on the front that says winterize or sanitize, we need to get to the back of our water heater. We need to find where our water heater is, get to the back of it. On the back side, we're gonna see these, these uh, one-way valves. This is currently set to be used for hot water. You can tell by these valves, whichever way they're pointing is the way the water flow. So currently I have hot water coming out of the water heater, flowing through and going to my faucets. What I wanna do is I wanna turn this one off. You see it's perpendicular, doesn't allow the water in. I wanna turn my bypass on. And then down at the bottom, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a cold water line because cold water goes into the water heater, hot water comes out. I wanna turn that one off. It looks just like this down below. So all of these now are facing up. That allows the cold water to come up, bypass the water heater, and we can actually get that bleach mixture to our fittings. By doing that, not only can we go ahead and sanitize our tanks, but once we bypass our water heater and we open up our faucets and we pull that bleach water mixture to our faucets, then our lines are actually sanitized as well. Now, once we're done with this, eight to 12 hours of sanitization, we're going to flush the lines. We'll flush those and then once we're flushed, once all the uh, bleach smell is gone, we'll come back to our water heater and we'll reset our valves to the normal position where they're all sitting in a horizontal position. In addition to what Todd just showed you, we'll put a couple of links below to other videos, sanitizing videos where they have done that. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is if you have an inline water filter that's inside your RV that you can't just disconnect. Like if you've got one of those inline ones that connects outside, don't worry about it. But we have this filter right here our water system, when the water goes in through this connection here, actually comes back out, goes through this filter, then back in. So I don't want to have our filter in here. I'm just going to pull the filter out and then leave the canister empty so it still gets sanitized, but I'm not going to have to worry about the filter. I'll also replace this filter with a brand new one when we're done. Before I pull this filter off, I want to let the pressure out of the system, so I'm going to connect up our hose here and just shut off our water, relieve the pressure so it's not spewing water when I take the canister apart. Yep. Should have brought a towel. You want a towel? Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> this filter is due to be replaced anyway. That's disgusting. Connect this back up. Campground water is usually pretty bad. <laughs> Hence that copper colored filter. Especially if you're on well water. We haven't been on, uh, up until now, we haven't been on a city water, I don't think in a while. No, maybe months and months. Yeah. I am going to turn water back on. And I'm gonna fill this bucket up. With our system, it's a bit of a two-part process. The first part of the process is to fill the tanks with the bleach solution. And then the second part is gonna be able to fill the lines. And that's just kind of the way our Nautilus P1 system is designed. If you look here, you can see the sanitize setting siphons to the tank, and then the winterize setting siphons to the lines. So we're gonna have a two phase here. We're gonna do the tanks first. We're gonna fill the tanks with the bleach and then we're going to siphon to the lines with the bleach. Our system has a 150 gallon freshwater tank. It's actually two tanks that are connected, but it's essentially one 150 gallon system. Uh, and using the ratio of one cup per 50 gallons, it's pretty easy, it's three cups. Rather than have three whole cups of bleach in one bucket and have it super concentrated, I'm gonna do one cup per bucket and do this three times. Yeah, Try not to get it on your clothes. Yep. You got, you got... 
You're not wearing uh, work no. clothes. You're wearing All right. video clothes. That's one cup of bleach and roughly, again, this isn't, this doesn't have to be a perfect mixture. I'm just going to disconnect the water here using the cutoff. So now I've got my siphon hose here and I have a quick disconnect. Obviously you don't need to have a quick disconnect, but since we've got it on this end, I just went ahead and added one because I got a bunch of them. And this gets right down to the bottom of the bucket. Need to get all of the dials here in sanitize mode, which means it's going to use the water pump to siphon this into the water tank. And sanitize, so this down, that down, that right, this left, and this right. Well, it's doing something. Yeah, just the water pressure that was in there. And then I'm gonna turn on the pump. It's going down. So this is definitely being siphoned out, which is the plan. It siphons out faster than it fills up. I guess I could have just used this to fill our bucket. Oh. <laughs> I'm just going to do this two more times to get two more cups of bleach in there. Okay, we now have three cups of bleach water, three cups of bleach in our fresh water tanks. I, I don't know if I mentioned our fresh water tank was already about 80% full. I went ahead and did that ahead of time so that I didn't have to wait forever for it to fill up. I'm gonna leave them uh, there until we do the siphon to lines section and then I'm going to top them off. For that last segment, I wasn't that concerned about the ratio of water to bleach. I just didn't want it super strong. I just wanted to be able to get three cups into that 150 gallon tank. For this section where I'm doing the siphoning into the lines, it's not gonna have a larger body of water to mix with. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that this mixture is about that same ratio, one cup to 50 gallons. Since I have a five gallon bucket here, that's about a 10th of a cup. Simple math. So a tenth of a cup. That's um, not really on there. No, I'm just going to use a quarter cup, and we'll just call it close enough. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. Well, a quarter of a cup is a lot more than a tenth of. Yeah, I know. So just do less than a quarter. Of a cup. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we have this bucket ready to go with you know approximately a tenth of a cup for five gallons, probably a little bit more, not gonna be the end of the world. I'm gonna flip this system over to siphon to the lines. One thing I've noticed on this Nautilus system is the way they're labeled is a little bit weird. It's got a winterize and a sanitize. One of them actually says sanitize, siphon to the pump, and the other one says winterize, siphon to the lines, to the fixtures. And that part is accurate, the description is accurate. It's just the whole winterize versus sanitize. You're gonna do both of those really. And that's what we're doing. The sanitize siphon to the tank is what we just did. We just got those three gallons of bleach into our 150 gallon tank. Now I'm gonna switch it over to winterize mode, which siphons to the lines and we're gonna put bleach in there and see how that goes. So winterize is boom, boom, and boom, boom. This is still down, left, right, left, up good to go. What we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to turn this on and then Tara is going to have to go inside and turn on the cold water on a line until she smells bleach and then turn on the hot water on a line until she smells bleach. We're going to coordinate over phone with this. We could use radios too, but. Okay, I'll go in. Hey. What are you hey, up to? Yeah, what are you up, what are you up to? Uh, I was hanging out. going to run some water and stuff. <laughs> okay, so you want me to do the cold first? Actually, you know what? Let's let's do the hot first. I want to make sure that it doesn't get hot. You know, you don't have to touch it because there'll be bleach water coming out. If you see if it steams or anything. So let me know when you're ready. Just oh, go ahead and open up the um, the hot. It's hot right now. Okay, it's already it's already open. Okay, turning on the pump and the water should come out. All right, let me know when you spell bleach. I got my face down in here. <laughs> We're waiting. We're waiting. 
Yep, go ahead and uh, turn the hot water off and turn the cold water on. Okay, cold water's on. Now, I mean, I already smell now, though. Yeah, you know, I don't know where those lines diverge. The water coming out of the faucet is bleach water, so I can smell it. Huh, I'm surprised that it got there that quick, but you know, the lines are pretty small. So let's just give it a second to make sure. Now there's air coming through, so maybe that was just residual from before. If it smells bleachy, we should be good. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Okay, let's go do the kitchen. Would you want me to go ahead and do the hot first on the kitchen sink? Sure. Okay, here we go. It's on. So far, there's no hot water here. Good. No bleach smell. Try not to get my face all the way in the bleach water. So far it's been running and I don't smell the bleach, but it's not get, gotten hot either. Bleach it is. I got bleach. I got bleach. Okay, go ahead and switch over to cold. Running cold. Coming at you. Yeah, now I smell it. Okay. Okay. We'll want to do it on the shower hot and cold and the sink hot and cold. Oh yeah, the shower. Okay. Okay, here we go. Cold water. I can't say that I smell the bleach now, but I think cold's good. Okay, you can smell it. Okay, so just go ahead and switch over to hot. We've got bleach. Okie dokie. Let's do the sink. And as, as soon as you get uh, bleach water in the cold, just switch it to hot. All right, I'm switching to hot. All right, let me know when you hit start on the washing machine within a warm, short cycle. I will. You're being so pushy. <laughs> Hold on, I just make sure there's nothing in there. That's a good idea. Let's hopefully at least yeah. make sure it's white. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm getting ready to hit play. Oh, hit play. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, I just hit start. And it's, it's doing the. Oh, here it goes. The pump won't kick on until it starts to pull water, so that's good. It likes to pull a little water, pull a little water, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll give it we'll give it a little bit more. We need to put some painters tape on all the faucets. Yeah. There we go. It's, it's pulling water. Okay. We, we've done the siphon to tank. We've got bleach in the tanks. We've done the siphon to lines. We did it to all of our lines, even the washing machine lines. Mm -hmm. Uh, the last step that I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this bucket about half full just to dilute whatever little bit of bleach is left in there. I'm going to siphon that to the tank and then I'm going to hook up water and I'm going to fill our fresh tanks until they overflow. Yeah. And then, we'll, then we'll be done. And you and you partially filled them already. Yeah, they don't have much further to go. Yeah. I'm now going to switch this back to sanitize mode, which is siphon to tank mode. Our entire system is full of bleach water and it will sit overnight, so about 12 hours. Yes. Todd's at 8 to 12, so that'll be good. And one little thing I thought of was my little my plan to top off the fresh water tanks was just using the power fill. Will work as far as the tanks go, but then we're gonna have a section of line between the fill station and the tanks that's just gonna be fresh water. So I'm going to power fill the tanks until it just starts to overflow. And then I'm going to put about another gallon of bleach water solution through it so that those lines Makes sense. also have bleach in them. Yeah, good thinking. That's it. We're done till tomorrow. Phase two tomorrow will be... Basically just flushing it all flushing out. Flushing it all out. Yep. And we'll probably have to let it run for a long time. Okay. Uh, just until we don't smell bleach anymore. Until I don't smell bleach anymore. Because I don't smell anything. You didn't smell anything. <laughs> A blessing and a curse. See you tomorrow. Yay! The water is available again. Yeah, it took a, it took quite a bit of time, strictly because we're having to use our pump to pump all the water out of our fresh water tanks. Yeah, it took a while, but it was easy. Yeah, right? it, was, it wasn't difficult. A couple of notes is depending on what type of pump you have, even though ours is upgraded, pumps still have a duty cycle, a maximum amount of time that they can run before they kind of overheat and shut off and have to cool down. 
most of them will have a built-in uh, switch like that, much like our macerator did. When it got kind of warm, it shut itself off. So did it, it took... seemed like when we were running two sinks at once, it happened faster. Right. Yeah, yeah, simply because ours, our pump is a variable speed pump, so when you have more than one sink on, it cranks it up. Most RV pumps are just one speed, and turning on multiple sinks may or may not help with the speed. Obviously, the faster you pump, the faster the pump's going to overheat. So we did have to kind of run it, let it cool off, run it, let it cool off. It takes a while to pump 150 gallons. <laughs> so basically, the process is really simple. You're just pumping all the water out. Now, once you get all of the water out, you want to fill it back up with fresh water again, all the way up, so it's maximum dilution. Mm -hmm. And then you want to run all of your sinks to pump all of that stuff out. We actually did that twice. That way we've diluted the system completely and there's really no more bleach at all anywhere mm -hmm. in the system. We did want to mention that we are currently connected to city sewer, not a septic. Right, when you're doing this process, you really want to be on city sewer, mm -hmm. or at least get permission from your campground or RV park if they have a septic system, because again, bleach introduced into a septic system can mess with that whole Eco ecology yeah. of bacteria and stuff. Right. It was a great thing that we went ahead and put blue painter's tape over all of the faucets, because had we not, we would have just out of habit turned on the sinks numerous times we want to do it so many times even with the tape on <laughs> yeah. there so how many times has your power gone out and you walk around your house hitting light switches just because yeah. it's because it's a habit you're just yeah. used to being able to click the sink on and use it yeah so, so it was an easy fix to yeah. just put a little bit of blue tape on there easy peasy yeah another tip we mentioned getting water and having that available mm -hmm. also a great idea if you're feel... coffee junkies <laughs> like us to fill this up so this is ready to go in the morning and you yeah. don't have to use your bottled water in your coffee pot. Another quick note, when we would travel, we fill up our tanks just enough for maybe an overnighter or maybe just a travel day. So if it's just a travel day, one day we might put like 30 gallons in our tank to use at a rest area, to be able to use our toilets, stuff like that. If we're going to be staying overnight, I usually put about 50 gallons in. My question to Todd had to do with is it better to leave that water in your tanks between travel days, like while we're sitting here, mm -hmm. or empty it? And he said, definitely it's better to keep your fresh tank completely empty. That makes, that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I pumped it all out and then I used our valves on the bottom to open up the rest and just let the fresh water dump out. Uh, that way the tanks are clean and empty and dry until you're ready to use them again. There's not anything bacteria growing in there. Again, this process doesn't do anything for our water heater. We bypass that, you don't want any bleach in there, but we do want to sanitize that, and that's going to be coming up in a separate video. That's right. Coming yeah. up soon, though. Very soon, because we need to do it. Yeah, we do. And we also need to do our anode rod. Yes, um, we'll do all that together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want to thank Todd once again for his help with this. We also want to thank him for stepping up and filming it over for us, because we messed up on our side and had some bad audio. So thank you, Todd. <laughs> yeah. We also recommend that you check out the Road Life Project. It is now free for you to join and be a member of the Road Life Project. And on there, they've been doing a lot of work to get insurance programs for RVers. So you can check that out. Yeah, and they have resources for full-time families, mm -hmm. doing homeschooling, kind of ways to, to help uh, kids on the road interact, yeah. which is probably needed more now than ever with oh. the whole COVID thing and yeah. everybody being isolated and homeschooling. Yeah. Unfortunately. Maybe, yeah. Also check out the National RV Training Academy in Texas. There you can learn how to fix any problem on your RV mm -hmm. and you can also take the next step and you can become a certified technician or an inspector. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different class choices for you there. Yeah, really, really good hands-on stuff. Todd tells us it's super intensive, so be prepared to have your mind blown. <laughs> and uh, yeah, check them out, and thanks for watching. Thanks. See ya. Got a stinky fresh tank? You might need to reset. Hi, you've reached Tara, please leave me a message. Got her voicemail. <laughs> Wait till they go yeah. out. Oh, his, his cable's dragging. Hi, you burning. Well, you know, suck it up, buttercup. Yeah. <laughs> That's my line. I know. So like the rest of our... I need a little breath after chasing after that guy. Can you skip it to the next round? No. <laughs> I don't know if things work. It's going to be stiff sometimes. 
And that's tidy, righty tidy. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on.